The KRGS Doors Show, proudly brought to you by KRGS Doors. For all your shop front roller shutters, roller grills, folding closures and bifold doors, visit www.krgsdoors.com.au. Welcome to the KRGS Doors Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Blackman. The aim of our podcast is to talk to cool people with cool stories, whether it be our suppliers, customers, staff, other business owners or people from different walks of life and get to know them a bit better. If you're interested in coming on, drop us a line or email or connect with us via Facebook and we can have a chat to see what we can do. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by KRGS Doors Managing Director Clayton Blackman and small business owner and Sutherland Shire Mayor Carmelo Pesci. Camelo runs a number of small businesses, from shop fitting to coffee shops. And on top of that, he has also been the Mayor of the Sutherland Shire since 2015. The Sutherland Shire is the third largest council in Sydney Metropolitan. Boasting Scott Morrison as a friend and trusted advisor, Carmelo has a thirst for hard work and helping people. Check out our new intro, and please welcome to the podcast, Mr Carmelo Pesci. If this doesn't turn you on, folks, you haven't got a switch! Thank you very much for coming on to the podcast today, Carmelo. What is the Carmelo Pesci story? Well, I'm 52, born in the Shire, never left. Very enthusiastic person. Uh, People reckon that I've got ADD. I'm a very passionate and dedicated person. So you do, not only are you the mayor of the Sutherland Shire, you also have your own shop fitting business, additional building services. How did you start in the shop fitting industry? When I left school in 1984, I left school in year 10. Three days later, I started an apprenticeship up at Kirawee as um, a shop fitter for a guy called John Adlard and Son. And um, we did a lot of work for NRMA and hotels. And um, I did my apprenticeship for four years. And three months after I finished my apprenticeship, I teamed up with two other young blokes that I went to school with. And uh, one was an electrician, one was a glazier, and we started a building business. And and that's where it all started from. So that was nearly 30-odd years ago? 1989, we started the business. Wow, that's fantastic. 31 years ago this year. That's fantastic. And all three of them gentlemen are still involved, yourself and the other two? Uh, we, we were teamed up for a, a six years, and then we all went out on our own. And, um, yeah, we just, uh, we, we're still all good mates, but we just went on and did our own fields, and I uh, probably continued on with the part of the, the business. Uh, but it's good. But I also, also own um, three... Uh, large cafes in the Shire as well, three coffee shops, which um, I started about five years ago when I knew I was going to become mayor. I knew something had to give. You know, the, the, I, if I knew I was going to become the mayor, I, I wanted to dedicate everything into it. I wanted to do a good job and I wanted, you know, initially I was only going to do it for one year. And um, at the moment where I stand, I think the last person that did five years straight was in 1960, in the early 60s. So um, I started these coffee shops and uh, so I've still got the shop fitting business, the coffee shops, and most of my time is spent as me. company you did your apprenticeship with, John Adler and son, the shop fitting company, they were around for a long time too, mate. Very, very long time. Yeah, they're the, in the shop fitting industry, they're uh, well known and so forth. With um, you say you've been the mayor mate there for five years. Are intentions there to stay on for for many more. We get internally elected by councillors. We've got an election coming up in September. Uh, if I'm fortunate enough to have the councillors um, say that uh, I've done a good enough job and continue on, well, I'll hang on for another year. And then next year, next September, we go back to proper elections right across the state. Um, and then I'll work out what I'll do from there. You must be doing something right, mate, if they're um, wanting you to be there for that, that period of time. So they must be enjoying your uh, – and like you said earlier, everything that you do do, uh, obviously we've, we've crossed paths, KRGS and your company have crossed paths in relation to us being one of your suppliers. But um, everything you do there, you, it's a, it's, you do it a, a wholeheartedly and, and give 110% to it as well, like you have with being the mayor. Yeah, I do. I, I, I think um, one thing – you know, when you walk away from life and you look back and I know that I'll, I'll say that, you know, that I've done a lot, of, I've done a lot and I've achieved a lot, but it's not just to go in and just do it. You've got to do it properly and make sure that you build relationships and you may not see someone for a couple of years, but you never know what happens in five years' time. You, you know, you might touch base again. And I'm the type of person to always 
you know, stay friends with everyone and and um, and do the right thing by everybody. Where's your um, coffee shops at in the Shire, mate? Whereabouts are they located? One in Gaimia, one in Cronulla, and one in Allura Beach on the beach at uh, Allura Surf Club. They uh, keep you on your toes as well? They do, and I've got three great managers, and my EA that's been with me for 15 years now, she helps me run the businesses, you know, the, the shop fitting business and the cafes. So I'm fortunate enough to have Liz, and um, she uh, is sort of my, my right-hand person. Any business, mate, like that, you need uh, good people around you. Just back onto the shop fitting side of things, mate. Uh, tell us a bit about additional building services. Uh, how did it start? How many staff you have? What type of businesses uh, do you get involved in with shop fitting there? So when we first started, it was actually the company was called ECG Building Services. So that was for E, Craig was the electrician, C, I was the carpenter, and G, Brent was uh, my one of my mates was a glazier. So hence the ECG. And we picked up a, a contract. We actually bought a contract of uh, an old pommy guy uh, that had um, the Catholic Education Office and he did work around head office in Leichhardt and, and uh, a lot of the schools. And we kept that for quite a long, long time. That took up a lot of our time. Within months of starting that business in 1989, we picked up the fire department and we used to do work in the fire stations and also... Uh, I met a guy called Brett Blundy. I'm not sure if you know Brett Blundy, but uh, Brett Blundy uh, started bras and things. Right. Um, it got, uh, yeah, it got to a point where he had two stores. Um, he started off with two stores. He started off at the same time as us. got to a point where we grew so fast. Within three years, business grew so fast where we had about 30 or 40 employees. We're only young guys. You know, we're in our early 20s. I think... We were overwhelmed and we wanted to, we thought we had to give a, a one client up because we wanted to make sure that we, you know, dedicate our time and, and deliver the right product and the right service for our clients. So, you know, I knew that the education office would always be there. I knew the fire department would always be there. And I thought to myself, how far can a guy go selling undies to women? <laughs> <laughs> really um, so I, I gave bread up. Um, and it was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And then about 20 years ago, I met a guy called Danny Guess who started a shop called Blue Illusion. He had 17 stores in Melbourne, came up to New South Wales. He asked me to uh, fit out one. He came to Cronulla, actually, and he leased a shop and he went to all the real estate agents and asked for a shop. And my name pop- kept popping up all the time and I did that shop and then a few months later he called me up and, he said, would you like to come and have a look at one at Balmain? I did. And a few months later, he said, would you like to get a barrel? I said, yeah, I did. And I ended up finishing up doing stores all around Australia and New Zealand for Danny. I did 140 stores. Danny was a fantastic man. Unfortunately, Danny passed away. He got hit with cancer about two years ago. And uh, the business sort of went to a halt. Phenomenal. But he was the driver of the business. He was a fantastic man. He was a good friend. Uh, he had his own plane. He, would, he lived in Melbourne. He'd bring me up. And say, look, I'm flying up. I'll be there in two hours. I'm picking you up from Bankstown Airport, and we're going to Dubbo to look at a, a shop. And I would. I'll go to, you know, we would go to New Zealand. We'd go all around Australia. And as I said, 140 stores, and you know, that was a great experience for me. Back on to being the mayor. So as you mentioned, you've been there for the last five years. How did you get involved to become the mayor? I got asked to join the Liberal Party about 13 years ago, and um, I was doing work for a, a lady who was a councillor at the time in Cronulla, and she asked me to join the Liberal Party. You know, you know, I vote Liberal, my parents vote Liberal, so um, I, um, I said, you know, I've never really thought about joining the Liberal Party, but I did. And then because I was a businessman, I, uh, one of the uh, gentlemen asked me, one of the uh, branch members said, do you like to join council? And I, I did do that. I was a councillor for two years, then he asked me would I want to be his deputy mayor, which I was, and then the year after, I got elevated to mayor, and I've been there ever since. How do you find the challenges between being a, a business owner and then being the mayor? Do, do a lot of that relate in, in managing different types of scenarios in, in different aspects? They do, and I, I think it's uh, being a businessman, it's been it's helped me to be the mayor. We negotiate a lot of deals. We, you know, we have got 240,000 residents live in the Shire, and... Um, my budget 
you know, is about um, 260 million. Um, I've got to negotiate deals with um, infrastructure, you know, any uh, building works that we do, you know, our property deals. Um, you know, we've got in the show, we've got Suez, which is the biggest, largest tip that we're in a partnership with. Um, we've got a national park. We're surrounded by beautiful nature. We've got four state MPs, two federal MPs. So I'm fortunate enough to be able to able to negotiate and 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 help move the Shire on to where it is today. And also to the the current prime minister is a, a resident or was a resident of the Shire. Did you have any relationships there in your role as the mayor? Yeah, we have a lot to do with each other. We're um, uh, he was a, when he was treasurer and I first became mayor, I would often give him a call and and ask advice. He was like a mentor to me. Um, he's a, you know, Scott is um, he's a good man. He's what you see is really what you get. He's a genuine, genuine man. There's no nothing fake about him. Um, and uh, I think we're very fortunate in the times that we are today to have him lead us. Um, and now, you know, it's, I think I'm catching up with him on Monday. I was with him at the footy on Saturday. Uh, he copped a little bit of flack from that. But we did, we were honestly social distancing on, on Saturday. We often catch up against the Sharks. But um, he's a good family man and has got some great morals. Agree, mate. He is doing a tremendous job, particularly in uh, leading this country at, at the time of need. And uh, it, uh, you do often see yourself and him at the footy there, the, the Sharks? Yeah, yeah. We well, we often go together. I often people send me message, yeah, photos, send me on TV together with him. Um, we normally catch up, and sometimes we'll sit together and we'll have a yarn about stuff. He'll ask me what's going on in the camp, you know, what's happening in the Shire, and you know, he, he, and, and you know, I, I tell him what I think honestly, and he tells me which direction I should you know head sometimes, and you know, I respect that. You know, he's um, as I said, he was a mentor. He's a mentor to me, and. Um, he's probably got one of the hardest jobs in Australia. Yeah, he's got the second hardest job. I think the um, cricket captain's the hardest job. Is that right? I believe that's. A, and then he's got the second. He's second one on the on the rung. But um, yeah, no, mate, he is doing a, a tremendous job. And he just seemed. I've never met the guy, but he just seemed down to earth and uh, and and comes across that way as well. He is. He likes a beer, and uh, he will tell you as it is. Yeah. And I think he does certainly come across that. He's a family man, likes the beer, goes to the footy. Like He's a man of the people, really, That and that's what we want as a leader. He is a man of the people. He's like, he's, there's nothing, honestly, there's no show pony. He's not a show pony at all. He's just that, you know, that genuine knock-around guy. A bit like yourself, Carmelo, man of the people. That's right. <laughs> How do you balance council and work life and then obviously personal life as well, um, having four businesses, being the mayor, and then also uh, a personal life outside of that? Yeah, it's um, for the first, you know, I remember the first six months of me being mayor, I, I couldn't breathe and, and I went, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I'm being honest, I, and I thought, and it got to a point where it put a lot of strain on my marriage, it put a lot of strain on my family, um, and we've, we've got through that because I've got a, a great family and a great wife, um, and I've got great support around me. Um, I honestly pump in minimum 60 hours a week as mayor, and that includes you know attending the office meetings, and I, I'm pretty much at a function every night. Come COVID, you know, I still do all the daytime work, but the functions had to pull back. Yeah. Um, we're just starting to build it back up again now. Um, I had to take a step back on my businesses and rely on my managers and my staff and give them more responsibility. And I've had to have an understanding family that I won't be at some of those family dues. And yeah. I'm not at home, you know, you know. But as I've got into the role in five years' time, I've been able to now time manage that better and go, right, okay, well, I can go here and I'll send someone else to represent me there and I'll attend a family do here. Yes, yeah, certainly. You do need that balance right across the board and that's good that you've been able to, to balance that over a period of time with an understanding family also. Do you have a desire to move into state or federal politics? 
It actually depends on the day you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Um, you know, I walk through down in Canberra. Sometimes I've gone down as you know. I normally go down on budget night. The PM asks me to come down, and you walk through there, and to walk through those buildings and those hallways is just amazing. And, and I can picture myself there. And and the PM when he was treasurer asked me, you know, if you ever you know interested, you know, let me know. Um, state, uh, you know, the, the thing is with Canberra is I hate the cold. <laughs> And, um, and you know, being away from my family, I think, worries me. Um, state probably might suit me a little bit better. Um, you, you know, it's here in Sydney. It's close to home. You can come home at night. Uh, we've got, you know, four great MPs here in the Shire, and unless one of them retire, you know, I don't know if a position would come up. Uh, it's all about timing. If the opportunity is there, I, I don't think I will say no. I, I, I'd, I'd look at it seriously. Carmelo, did you get an opportunity the the night that um, ScoMo won the last election? Did you get an opportunity to, uh, at that presentation that night as part of his uh, supporters? Yeah, I was there. yeah, yeah. I got invited. Um, that was at the Wentworth, yeah. Was at the Wentworth, yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember leaving the Shire, and we closed. I looked after the booth that actually had um, Scott's parents. So yes. So he I was fortunate enough to look after his parents for the day. And uh, I remember just before we closed the booze at 6 o'clock, um, you know, I heard a report saying that Labor's going to smash it in. I did all the counting and, and then I went home, had a shower, got changed, and I went to Wentworth. And morale wasn't that high. We thought that, you know, we were going to get hammered. But when we got there, it was probably, you know, around that 10 o'clock, we went, shit, we're going to win this. And, um, and we did. And, you know, it was the, the election that was meant to be lost. And yeah. He, and I and I think he's done a great job ever since. Yeah, he has absolutely. Just on that, were you? What was his reaction like, if you can, when it was sort of flick the switch of, hey, we're not supposed to win this, but we are. Scott was very confident. I sat on his. Um, um, there was a committee that ran his campaign, and I was on that committee. the The polling was coming back very positive. And that was very confidential. We kept it to ourselves. Um, but I knew what was happening out there and I knew that the turmoil that the party had gone through with with Malcolm um, and then Scott taking over and um, uh, Tony Abbott. And, and it wasn't pretty, you know, and I think if we're going to – if we lost it, it, would, it was our own fault. It was the yeah. party's own fault, their own squabbling. Um, but I think – uh, we got across the line, and we got across the line because Scott Scott got it across the line. He uh, sold it well, didn't he? Didn't he? Sleep, and he went and visited the whole country. And yeah. Sat down with the average person and had a beer with the average person. Um, and I remember going him going down to Tasmania and playing with pool with these, you know, just knockabout guys. They were like they weren't wealthy. Yeah. They were just normal guys, and, and I think that. Him being the type of person he is is what got him across the line. Exactly. It seems to be that there was some issues there beforehand and squabbling internally, but it seems that that's come in the past now. It's it's not as out there as whether Scott said, hey, we're all on one page and we're all together or yeah, I, uh, moving forward. Yeah, it is. And I think it's um, a detriment to his leadership. You know, I think he has control of his team now, and uh, where I, I just don't think the other two leaders really had that control of the whole team. And and Scott is a type of person where he's gone, "Right, we, we are a team, and we've got to move forward." And you know, you saw what happened before. If you want to go down that avenue, we won't get re-elected. But this is my vision. This is what we're going to do. And if you don't want to be part of my team, go. That's how he is. Now, mate, you may have already answered this question in your introduction of your life, saying that you're very passionate and dedicated. What do you put your success down to? Um, the people around me, um, the support that I have. Um, first of all, my wife and my kids, because um, without them, I, I couldn't really do this job. Um, I needed their understanding. And then I talked about Liz before, where she's been able to chip in and help with the businesses. And then, 
you know, seniors, the older seniors that have been around the party for a long time where I've been able to sit down and talk to them and get advice and, you know, I'm a, I'm a bloke where I'm the type of person that listens and then speaks after. Um, you know, no one knows it all and, and I'm a strong believer is until the day you die, you'll always be learning something. So listen first, then speak. That certainly helps too when you don't have to reinvent the wheel that if it's already been done and, and you can get that advice, you can go straight into yeah. it. Jack Gibson, the great, the great Jack Gibson once upon a time said to me, I had an opportunity and uh, my father was with us. Uh, it was at a function. Actually, John Howard was at the fun- same function. Yeah. Um, it was in town. I forget what hotel it was at. But... um. John Jack Gibson once upon a time said, so Dad went up and said, Oh, have you got some have you got some I've got a young coach here, Jack, have you got some advice for him? And it, Jack's advice was listen twice and say nothing. Yeah, there you go. I grew up with the, the, the Gibson family. I was still with uh, one of his sons and I'm still close with um with um John. Um and they're a very prominent family in the area. But of course. Um, very Jack was a very respected man. Absolutely. Away from council and work and everything like that, how do you relax? You know, I, I have a property down the coast with a mate, with my business partner, and um, we have um, uh, 25 acres, and it's a place where I can go. Even though Nikki, my wife, gets angry with me when I go down there, we'll entertain and I'll be on the tractor or I'm moving cows, and that's my relax. Yeah. That's how I, you know, even though it's work, I still relax. That, the property in Berry, and, and I've got a boat, and sometimes we'll, you know, just jump on the boat, go and read the papers on a Sunday, have some breakfast, and then come home. It's a great so spot, mate, good. Berry, down there. It's beautiful, beautiful country. It is a great spot. To finish up with the podcast, mate, we ask our fast five questions, and they're just a rapid fire just to get to know you a little bit better. So what would be your last meal? A big, cold seafood, seafood platter. Endless seafood platter. That'd be uh, it sounds great. Uh, your drink of choice. I normally drink straight scotch with ice and uh, gin, or a coffee from one of your coffee shops. Coffee, yes, yes. Well, actually, on that, what is your coffee of choice? Coffee of choice. Um, I normally just have uh, espressos. Great. Best, co- best coffee in the show, mate. We are. I would <laughs> say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your favourite holiday destination? Um, my background's Italian and I've never been to Europe and last year we were fortunate enough to get, have a trip. We spent six weeks overseas with some friends, Greece and Italy, and um, to walk, to, to go through and, and look at uh, where my parents came from. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a water person and the, through the water or the coastline, that was amazing. And I sit back, we were there this time last year and um, I think that would have to be the highlight of my life. Just in front of uh, Berry. That's right. <laughs> so you got to see where your your parents and that type of thing were from as well? Yeah, I did. My parents were from down south Italy and uh, they were from a town called Calabria. It's a region. Mum, they were, mum and dad were apart, probably about two hours apart. They met here in Australia. But to go back and see the roots and see the town where, you know, they still don't even have proper curb and guttering in those towns. They were really old country towns and, to, to see back and visualise where, you know, I went to my mum's house and I went to my dad's house. Uh, we don't have any relatives over there anymore, but mum gave me a map and said, and this is a photo, and I sort of followed the way and I went there and I found the house. It was amazing. How good's that? Did you have yeah. a talk to the to the council over there, mate, about doing the curb and guttering at the same time? Or? I actually ran into a councillor there. He knew I was coming. And um, and uh, we sat there and he showed me and he said to me, oh, see this little piazza? We did this, the council did this. And it was very, very small. And I'm thinking, if you, had see, if you can see what we've done, what we do. <laughs> you didn't show him Cronulla Mall, did you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the most famous person's phone number you have in your phone? The PMs. PM? Yes, on, I thought you'd have like a bat phone straight on your desk, straight to him, a hotline. You know, I've got, I'm fortunate enough to, uh, when he got elected, the uh, first, one of the first things he said, he rang me in this thing, gave me his number, he said, This is my number. Don't give it to anyone, but this is my number. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm blessed and honored that he was, you know, gave me that, uh, that privilege. Good. 
Is that usually a uh, Monday morning phone call to talk about how the Sharks went on the weekend? No, well, we're normally at the, at the game together. anyway. <laughs> bit of bit of a controversy corner. Yes. If heaven does exist, what would God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well, what would God say? What would I say? Either or. Yeah, I'd probably turn around and say, "But where do we start?" And he'd probably tell me to slow down and calm down now. <laughs> Relax a little bit. Yeah, relax. You'd be looking to get on the council, mate, if you got up there, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. I'd like to run the place. <laughs> Yourself, there'd be a couple of others there that'd probably be keen to, to join you and, and turn the place around. Yeah. Mate, um, thanks very much for coming on today and having a chat to us. It's been great. And um, obviously, uh, we, we've crossed paths being um, in the shop fitting industry and, and us being able to supply some of your fit outs and so forth. It's been great, but it's also good to hear on the other side of the story the success of you being the mayor and um, the time and time and effort that you've put in, particularly to the Shire. Um, so, mate, yeah, keep up the good work, and it's it's great to chat. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. You should be extremely proud of what you've achieved in business for for such a long time, and and not only shop fitting, but but the coffee shops as well. So if you're ever in the Shire and people, listeners, you're looking for a coffee, get to uh, one of Carmelo's coffee shops. Um, but also proud as the mayor, I'm a I'm a resident of the Sutherland Shire. They do call it God's country for a reason. Definitely, definitely. Thank you again for coming on, Carmelo, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Good work, Cheers, mate. mate. Thanks very much. Bye bye. That wraps up our chat with Carmelo Pesci, shop fitter, coffee shop owner, and Mayor of Sutherland Shire. If you are after any shop fitting work, visit www.additionalbuildingservices.com.au or a great coffee, visit BR Chini's Espresso at Cronulla, Gaimir, or Allura. If you have missed any previous episodes of the KRGS Doors podcast, you can download them from our website, www.krgsdoors.com.au forward slash podcast, or on your favourite podcast player, search KRGS Doors. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss any future episodes. This also boosts our ranking and my ego. The other thing I suggest, if you have enjoyed the podcast, head to your favourite podcast player and leave a review or a rating. On our next episode, we speak to Luke Goodwin, son of a rugby league icon, assistant coach at Canterbury Bulldogs, and director of the Chad Robinson Legacy Foundation. We talk all things growing up in a football household and his charity involvement. I've been your host, Drew Blackman, and you've been fantastic for tuning in today. As always, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. Thanks. Till next time. The KRGS Doors Show, proudly brought to you by KRGS Doors. For all your shopfront roller shutters, roller grills, folding closures and bifold doors, visit www.krgsdoors.com.au.